A group of 10 hostages, nine women and a teenage girl were returned to Israel last night on the fifth straight day of the Qatari-brokered deal for a pause in Gaza fighting. Another group of about 10 hostages is expected to be free tonight as part of a one- or two-day extension of the truce. More from ILTV's Steve Leibovitz. After 53 days in captivity, nine women and a teenage girl and her dog were turned over by Hamas to the Red Cross before transfer to Israel. Six elderly Israeli women, two younger women, and one mother and her teen daughter were handed over by Hamas and terror ally, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, to the Red Cross in Gaza last night, and from there directly to Israel via the Kerem Shalom crossing. There was brightly lit and stage-managed Hamas-released footage of the handover in which the women can be seen walking flanked by armed, masked terrorists. One of the hostages, Dita Hyman, 84, was in a wheelchair and was helped into the Red Cross ambulance by medical staff. Hamas also released footage of the handover in which teen hostage Maya Lemberg, 17, is seen holding her dog Bella which was thought to have been killed in the October 7th onslaught. Two Thai hostages returned in a separate agreement. They were greeted by their nation's visiting foreign minister. The hostages were flown to hospital in Israel for further treatment and monitoring before being reunited with their families. The returnees underwent an in-depth medical evaluation. Some of them had complex underlying illnesses and some suffered injuries when they were abducted or during their time in captivity. Their medical condition is complex and they will need further medical treatment and attention, but there's no immediate danger um, to any of them. Another group of about 10 hostages is expected to be freed tonight. The Prime Minister's office received the list with the names of the abducted Israelis that Hamas is slated to release. The sixth group of hostages is due to be freed later today as part of the temporary truce in Gaza between Israel and the terrorist group. The families of those on the list of hostages due to be released tonight have been informed the youngest among the nine remaining child hostages, Kfir Bibas, and four-year-old brother Ariel are not expected to be on the list. Another day of the hostages deal, and Israelis are still awaiting the return of the Bibas family, who were abducted by Hamas on October 7th. The family with the two red-haired boys have become a symbol of the hostages of sorts. But now Hamas has released a statement saying that the family has been killed. This is still unconfirmed, but it is a devastating statement, if true, and a testament to the absolute brutality of Hamas. And despite the truth, several soldiers were injured by Hamas attacks on Israeli troops in northern Gaza. This is another violation by Hamas in the temporary pause in fighting that began on Friday. IDF Chief of Staff Halevi said again that the army stands ready to advance when ordered. More from ILTV's Devo Klein. In an apparent breach, three explosive devices were detonated near forces at two locations and gunfire was directed at troops. This appeared to be the first serious violations in the temporary pause in fighting that began on Friday. The Army said that in one of the incidents, gunfire was also directed at troops who returned fire. In both cases, the IDF forces were within the agreed-upon ceasefire lines. The IDF returned fire and the terror threats were reportedly neutralized. IDF Chief of Staff Halevi warned that the military was ready today to resume fighting in the Gaza Strip and is preparing to continue fighting to dismantle Hamas as soon as the pause is over. ולאישור התוכניות המבצעיות להמשך. אנחנו נערכים להמשך הלחימה, לפירוק חמאס. זה ייקח זמן, אלו יעדים מורכבים, אבל אין מוצדקים מהם. Meanwhile, Khan Yunus residents in southern Gaza restocked on supplies taken from the allowed hundreds of trucks to enter from Egypt daily over the last six days. Cars lined at fuel stations indicating that fuel needed by Hamas terrorists was reaching the enclave.
footage released by the army shows humanitarian aid trucks leaving the Nitsana crossing in Israel to deliver gas and diesel to Gaza through Egypt. And joining us now with more on the hostages deal, the extended operational pause and the IDF mission to eliminate Hamas is former head of IDF operations, Major General Israel Ziv. Thank you for joining us. Hi. So the operational pause is holding and will likely be extended yet again. Uh, but in the last day or so, we've seen Hamas breaking the rules, breaking the agreement and attacking IDF soldiers. Meanwhile, the IDF is sending fuel into Gaza. So how much of a risk is this continued pause to the IDF soldiers in Gaza and to the future uh, of the IDF mission? First of all, you know, what can we expect from terror organization? Uh, the, the brutality and disrespect that they are doing for uh, any, any rule or humanity, uh, they are playing again uh, even on, on something that they've just signed, you know, a few days ago. Uh, and, and we understand with whom we are dealing. But as long as uh, Israel can can get back the uh, the kidnapped uh, kids, women, elderly, uh, we we have to stick with with the, with the, with that deal and try to to do our best in order to get uh, to get our people back. For the meaning of the the pause itself, it's not dramatic. It's a it's a it's a tactical issue. Of course, it's it's breaking the momentum. It's stopping the momentum of the IDF. But on the other hand, uh, it's not something we cannot overcome. I think once the the this ceasefire is 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 out, uh, the Hamas will see a major attack uh, following uh, a minute after the ceasefire is is over. So you mentioned the momentum. Uh, so the IDF is essentially prepared to pick up where they left off? Um, yes, I think that even in a higher gear. We, we believe that the, the, the main reason for the, you know, for the Hamas to, to, to accept or to go for this uh, exchange of uh, hostages is, uh, is only because of the IDF pressure. It's not for political reason. It's not like, you know, uh, Sinwar turned to be a, a, a humanitarian person. It's all about the pressure that the IDF is, uh, is putting. And now they realize, I think, that uh, what happened in Gaza is going to happen to them in, in Khan Yunus and other places. So I think that uh, they've agreed to that in order to break the continuation of, of, of the attack, of the offense. And they would do their best, you know, uh, you know to do anything to, to prevent it. Uh, by the way, at the same time that we are preparing to, to, to continue to pick up the, the campaign, the military campaign, we need to be open also for uh, the option if they uh, like uh, at this time a, a, a political solution. This is something we should not turn the, the door, uh, the door uh, close to that if it's a full demilitarization of Gaza, full, to pick up all the arms, everything. No even one Klachnikov stays in uh, Gaza and deportation of the leadership and, and, uh, and, and bringing to court all the people that have done uh, uh, the, the massacre and, and the terrible, horrible things uh, in, within Israel, within the kibbutzim. A political situation is, I mean, is that something that's on the table? Is that something that's being discussed now? Not really. I mean, we, we, we start to hear some, uh, some suggestions. Uh, but, you know, the Hamas is talking from the throat of others like he, he is in the upper end and, and he's trying to put the condition, you know, for full return of, of uh, the people he kidnapped. But that's not going to happen. It's if something, it's about, it's, it's the other way around. You know, if, if Sinwar is worried about himself and his family and uh, his uh, dear uh, relatives, uh, he has the chance now, you know, to, to do the right thing which is deportation and demilitarized Gaza. But if not, we'll keep on.
complete uh, demilitarization and ending Hamas rule in Gaza, certainly the end goal. Major General Israel Ziv, thank you for your analysis. Thank you. And moving on, Mossad Chief David Barnea was in Qatar for talks on a potential further extension for the hostage for pause and fighting agreement between Israel and Hamas, with Israel being open to a further hostage deal. More from ILTV's Steve Leibovitz. Mossad Chief David Barnea met top Qatari and Egyptian mediators with the notion of another possible extension to the truce deal that could see more civilian hostages released over the coming days. Talks were being held in a broader framework to see male hostages freed. Israel is said to be open to weighing a further hostage deal once all children and women have been freed. The temporary truce began on Friday and is currently in its sixth day and extends to a seventh day with the release of 10 more hostages tonight. Israeli leaders have said repeatedly that the war with Hamas will continue as soon as the current hostage agreement and now its extension has run its course. That could be as early as this weekend. Four days were used to increase the number of hostages that are identified by, uh, by Hamas and therefore we reach this number of, uh, of 20. We are hopeful that in the next 48 hours we will be getting more information from Hamas regarding the rest of, uh, of the hostages. According to a report in the Washington Post, Hamas is open to release all of the hostages, including soldiers. The captives are reportedly being considered in five categories, men too old for army service, female soldiers, male reservists, soldiers, and bodies of Israelis who died in captivity. More than 100 hostages in total. Hamas demands would include the release of many Palestinian security prisoners, continuing aid and fuel into the Gaza Strip, and Hamas is also demanding a continuation of the pause in fighting. Israeli officials have insisted that future hostage releases would be negotiated under fire, with the war in Gaza continuing. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, Join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative, available on the web, Android, and Apple. And with the release of the hostages, new details are beginning to emerge of the horrible conditions they were kept in captivity by Hamas. From little to no food, being threatened with guns, and even being held in cages. And yes, you heard that right, cages. The details in the following report. Nine-year-old Irish-Israeli girl Emily Hand was released this week. Her father, Tom Hand, who initially believed her to have been killed only to later discover she was one of the hostages, told CNN that upon returning home, his daughter would only speak in a whisper because she had been conditioned to be quiet. He said that since she has been back, she has hidden underneath the covers at night and cried for extended periods of time, unable to be comforted. Hand also said his daughter believed she had been held in captivity for an entire year. While Emily has been reluctant to speak about her time in captivity, other hostages are sharing more details. Deborah Cohen, the aunt of French-Israeli 12-year-old Eitan, who was also released in recent days, described some of the horrors her nephew had shared of his time in captivity with France's BFM TV. Eitan apparently has passed des horreurs là-bas. Le Hamas ISIS, il est obligé de voir le film d'horreur que personne veut voir. Il est obligé à regarder ça. Peut-être suis naïve, mais je voulais espérer que soit bien traité, mais apparemment non, c'est des monstres. His aunt also said he had been beaten and threatened at gunpoint. Chaque fois qu'un enfant pleurait là-bas, il lui emmenait avec un arme pour qu'il se taise. Et arrivé à Gaza, euh, tous les civils, tout le monde l'ont tapé quand il est arrivé là-bas. C'est un enfant de 12 ans. On parle d'un enfant de 12 ans. Comment on peut se sentir bien après un, une expérience comme ça? Je vais aller le voir, je vais lui donner un grand câlin et il a un long chemin à faire. 
Other reports by Israeli media indicated that women were held in cages. Others reported that they were given limited food, only a little bit of rice on some days. And the Israeli health ministry reported that the elderly woman abducted by Hamas lost between 8 to 15 kilograms, or roughly 15 to 30 pounds on average, amounting to starvation. And now, Dr. Pazit Ziv, our next guest, saw three members of her family murdered by Hamas and seven members of her family taken hostage on October 7th. This week, six of them, Shoshan Haran, a grandmother, her daughter Adi Shoham, and Adi's two small children, eight-year-old Naveh and three-year-old Yahel, who you may recognize as the sweet little girl with beautiful blonde curls. And Sharona Vigdoli and her 12-year-old daughter, Noam Avigdoli, were all released from Hamas captivity after over 50 days. Another family member, however, remains captive in Gaza. Fazit, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So one very big family and such tragedy, but also joy uh, at seeing them come home this week. Images of little Yahel with a, you know, a big teddy bear uh, released to the media. So, so first of all, how are they doing? Uh, how are they? Uh, yeah, it is uh, overwhelming, and um, um, the all of the emotions are combined together, and it's very hard to articulate how how we're feeling. So, I will start by just by saying thank you for the Jewish community in London who financed my arrival over here to come together with my family a real night. Um, I have a. The, the joy is immense, but there is still sense of urgency because, as you can understand, it's 50 days and on on that there are many, many people in captivity without any information on their whereabouts, their um, uh, situation, medical situation, if they're showering, if they're eating, if they're seeing daylight. Um, I don't know anything. The, the family is still coming to terms and trying to realize what has happened on the day that they've been kidnapped. So obviously everybody's um, needing the space and their, their to, to a room to feel safe and secure. It's every, everything is very raw at the moment. Absolutely. And, you know, as you mentioned, you live in the UK. You flew here to Israel to be with the family, to accompany them. But still, the nightmare, uh, as you said, is not over. And you still have another family member in Gaza. Do you have any information uh, about them? Do you have any update on their condition? Have you heard anything? So, yes, I'm a British citizen, and I flew over. Um, no, I don't know any information. Um, and if I knew, there was obviously reasons why not to share. Um, we don't know anything, and uh, what I have to share with you is that I am overwhelmed with what's happening here in Israel. That I've noticed, and it is um, really, really a phenomenon that will be discussed in the future. I mean, everybody is supporting one another through this misery and trauma. There is such a sense of community and togetherness. People are helping and supporting and bringing food and bringing, um, you know, warm clothes and anything that uh, is needed. Obviously, there's a long, long way to recovery. Um, the houses are burnt. There's nothing. It is a devastation. But within all of this devastation, the, this Israeli spirit is coming to life and it's seen all over the highways, there are banners, and we will um, be salvaged together. It is so empowering and inspirational. It is fantastic to see. I, myself, am going to volunteer uh, picking cucumbers, and uh, everybody from all walks of life, every morning, wake up and, and doing things. This doing things is also happening um, where I'm coming from. The, the commu Jewish communities around the world are just sending everything that is needed, and they are so supportive. It is absolutely um, heartwarming. And I do have to ask, you said that it's, you know, they have a long journey ahead, but in the past few days, uh, as more and more hostages have been released, we are hearing of sort of really horrible conditions that they were subject to. Has the family shared anything about this? Or are they sharing a bit of, of what they went through during their time in captivity? 
Um, so you would understand that I'm, I'm not allowed to talk about anything uh, that would mention conditions and all. And I, I just want to um, to say that we are all listening to what is published, and it is current that it was not a vacation or a holiday. It was traumatic um, without any understanding of where they are, what they're, what is happening, obviously struggling with limited food and this connection. Um, there was, the stories are horrible. The stories of babies without parents, the, the family split apart, not knowing what happened on the day when they left. So now, not only that they need to share what they have experienced, but they need to acknowledge and come to terms with, with the catastrophes. I mean, there's no neighborhoods to return to. The communities are gone. The, there's so many people who, who were murdered and, and uh, so many houses ruined. It is a catastrophe, really. Absolutely a catastrophe, uh, but we're so happy to have uh, little Yahel and, and the rest of the family back in Israel. Uh, Dr. Pazit, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you. Many in the Gen Z generation today are very vocal in their support for Hamas and their anti-Israel views, but not all Gen Zers feel this way. In the midst of Israel's war against Hamas, Israel 365 has brought a delegation of Jewish and Christian Gen Z women to Israel in an expression of solidarity as part of their Keep God's Land leadership mission. ILTV's Devo Klein has more. Just before Thanksgiving, Israel 365 orchestrated a distinctive program for both Jewish and Christian Gen Z women leaders in their 20s. Israel 365 focuses on bringing Jews and Christians together to support Israel. Rabbi Eli Michelle, Director of Education at Israel 365, explained that the focus of this mission is to nurture a generation of leaders who are informed, passionate, and capable of shaping a better future for both Israel and America. The group actively engaged in a variety of activities to gain a first-hand understanding of Israel's challenges and resilience since the October 7th massacre. These experiences ranged from visiting those most affected by the conflict, including soldiers and refugees, to heartfelt conversations with individuals who have been victims of Palestinian terrorism, such as Rabbi Leo D. Notably, the participants also had Thanksgiving dinner with Israeli member of Knesset Simcha Rotman. As they return from this transformative experience, the participants are committed to partnering with Israel 365 to continue championing the cause of Israel in the face of rising anti-Semitism. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast. Clear skies are expected tonight around the country with lows of 11 degrees Celsius or 52 degrees Fahrenheit. Then tomorrow, mostly sunny skies and a steady rise in temperature is set to reach highs of around 22 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's all for today's news. For more updates from Israel on all your devices, check out our ILTV channel, subscribe to our ILTV newsletter, and don't forget to check out our new and improved website, ILTV.tv, with all the latest news from the heart of the state of Israel. I'm the Dark of Elazi. Be well, stay safe, and thank you so much for watching.